welcome back to Berlin F.U.N. Today we discuss the philosophy of war and with that we do an Ukraine international war update, the fourth. The show is recorded on the 12th of September 2022 and as I am discussing an ongoing international war, all facts are preliminary and might end up being partly or wholly wrong. We start with the UNHCR update. It's the UNHCR Ukraine situation flash update number 29. They write that since the beginning of the hostilities, and with the hostilities they mean international war, more than one third of Ukrainians have been forced to flee from their homes, which means this is one of the largest human displacement crises in the world today. Within Ukraine, nearly 7 million people have been internally displaced by the war. And more than 7 million refugees from Ukraine have been recorded across Europe. Of those 7 million, 4 million people have filed for temporary protection status across Europe. We move on to a different source as I'm trying to research the official death toll the international war in Ukraine has caused so far. And with the official death toll, I mean civilian and military deaths. With that, I mean Ukrainian as well as Russian deaths. It's incredibly hard to find estimates in the internet that somewhat feel realistic. It ranges from Instagram updates that speak of 22,000 dead people in Mariupol only two UN updates that speak of a couple of thousand deaths and they stopped reporting mid-July about that number as well as there are major news outlets that talk about that reporting on the UN's official death toll that the dark number likely to be thousands higher. If you have come across better sources that speak of the official total death toll of the ongoing war in Ukraine please at me, thank you. Little reminder as we go on to discuss uh, the ongoing crises in Ukraine that, and I've taken this fact out of this book, which summarizes all speeches given by Zelensky since the start of the war, that men in Ukraine are not that easily allowed to flee. You are enlisted for military service. It's not really a question of voluntariness any longer. You're not really asked whether you want to fight till death in order to protect your home country. The international war in Ukraine has been going on for nearly seven months now. So let's bear that involuntariness in mind as the Ukrainian government continues to seek a military solution to this international war. From another UNHCR update called Flash Appeal Ukraine Humanitarian Program Cycle, I found this map of Ukraine. Every dot represents a certain number of people in need listed according by region. Crimea, the Ukrainian territory that has been, that was invaded in 2014, and that invasion costed more than 14,000 people their lives, is already marked here as autonomous Republic of Crimea. Zelensky's, and thus the official Ukrainian government's opinion of this war is that this war will end when the Russian aggressors are driven out of Ukraine. This is how we will have peace in Ukraine. This is how the war will end. And if you are to believe in international law and international practice, and this is not really a question any longer at this point in time, of course Ukraine has the right to self-defense. Let's also why you see those short videos online of people celebrating when they hear the news that Ukrainian military is driving back Russian military you know, out of the east and out of the south, in the south and the east of the country of Ukraine. The Russian invasion was particularly strong. And that is also why Zelensky now, especially now, wants more and more heavy artillery and weapons also from Germany. So they follow the military logic of we are winning back some land in Ukraine right now if we get supported enough with military equipment there will be peace in Ukraine soon you know why stop the military action now as we seem to be winning and it seems logical to ask for heavy military equipment donations in this point of time while also it seems a little 
on the nose. It seems a little too obvious. Isn't military strategy just supposed to be more sophisticated and mysterious and hard? Like, it seems like kindergartners' logic to win this war with more war. It always has. Olaf Scholz has not agreed to send the heavy artillery, especially not the Leopold tanks, which Ukraine is asking for. While I think it does not really matter, you know, I don't think war will be won with heavier war. You might end up winning back some land, but sure as shit you will lose more humans. And I don't mean to go full rubber fangirl here, but if you see the world from above, winning back the Earth's land, to keep calling it Ukraine, but in exchange lose more and more humans, seems very stupid. Always has. I would not want to fight in the war. I would not want anyone I love to fight in the war. I do not want anyone to die. If I were to be in Ukraine, I would want the Ukrainian government to give up. I would not want the war to continue for a single day. And I don't really see this opinion represented in media and that's why I am doing this show. This is the 20th show of Berlin FUN and we discuss the philosophy of war and we give you a Ukraine international war update, the fourth. As I am discussing an ongoing international war, all facts are preliminary and might, uh, might end up to be partly or wholly wrong. What makes stuff so complicated apart this, from this being international war is that Putin's last negotiation demand, at least to my knowledge, was that Ukraine to seize all military actions Ukraine to enshrine neutrality into its constitution so they may never enter NATO or the EU and that the areas of the regions of Donetsk and Luhansk will be Russian territory. And you know that fascists aren't really known for like stating publicly what their next move is so I can't really check Putin's Twitter whether that is his last demand for Russian military withdrawal from Ukraine. To my knowledge, this is the last stand. This is what it's on the negotiation table by Russia. So with that demand being in the back of our mind, first law school level kind of problem. Let's say Ukraine were to agree to the Kremlin's demands, you know, for peace's sake. You know, why would Russia not just keep on going? You know, what is holding Russia back from, let's say a year from now, to again start military aggression? Let's again start an international war. What would stand in Russia's way to then next time to not just like attack and occupy Kiev? Well, I guess if it were so easy, why not invade Kiev right now? Second law school level kind of problem is that Porichisha, you know, Europe's largest nuclear plant facility. You know, it's, it is not in the areas of Luhansk or Donetsk, yet it borders on Donetsk. So the threat of nuclear war makes everything a lot more complicated. Duh. But, you know, on the other hand, Russian military is in control of Zaporizhia right now. So it's not like the threat of nuclear war or nuclear catastrophe is lower now than it would be if Ukraine were to give in to the Kremlin's demands, right? So Russian soldiers are occupying Zaporizhia, Zaporizhia has been shot at and explosives have been laid around the nuclear plant. If Zaporizhia were to explode or any sort of nuclear catastrophe were to unfold, Zaporizhia would be six times the size of Chernobyl. Chernobyl was in Ukraine too, in case you forgot. So it's not like Ukraine or Europe is safe right now with the war still ongoing. Even though Ukrainian military seem to take back land in the east and the south of the country, which is good news under a certain perspective. Because you're winning back land, I guess any move forward by Ukraine is good news. And I know that media is supposed to be like all cheerful and happy and like is supposed to downplay stuff. So I'm happy for Ukraine. I'm happy if Ukrainians are happy. I'm happy if this gives hope to Ukraine. But sure as shit, Ukraine is still losing people by the minute. Sure as shit, 
people are dying by the minute. So the threat of nuclear war, number one reason, apart from the NATO treaty, why it was never seriously discussed whether NATO will secure the Ukrainian airspace. Even Eric Markwood was so kind as to explain that to me in person. No serious politician is gonna risk <laughs> nuclear war or world war to protect Ukraine, to protect, you know, a relatively poor European country. So let's have a look at what happened in the last few days in Ukraine. Media reports that according to Ukrainian information, Russian military is reported to have evacuated large parts of the Kharkiv region. The German Foreign Minister Baerbock is sharply criticizing Russia's aggression and is demanding Russia to cease the occupation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Kuleba says, every day someone is weighing up the pros and cons in Berlin. People die because the tanks haven't been delivered. Kuleba sees no obstacles to the delivery of German main battle Leopard, Leopard tanks. Life UA map seems to be the most reliable website in order to stay up to date. A most reliable and timely website in order to stay up to date with military actions on the juris on the territorial jurisdiction of Ukraine. Ah, uh, so you know what's easier than come to find a solution to international military aggression as a response to the international war in Ukraine. There's one single country between Ukraine and Germany, and that's Poland. I know the international war in Ukraine has become the new status quo, but can you remember six months ago? Do you remember how frightened we were? You know, change domestic cause, show some respect. Be respectful to the fact that every Western country is following industrial capitalism. You know, be respectful to the fact that neoliberal industrial capitalism and colonialism go hand in hand with military aggression always have so you know what's easier than international war military strategy implement a universal basic income as a domestic anti-war for peace for equity policy in order to make germany the freest and fairest country in the world and of course you know on on other international news, Greece and Turkey's military tension are rising. Don't forget, giving up is politics too. Maybe try some women in power. Apparently women have succeeded in negotiating peace with Putin before. Don't hoard your money. Thank you so much for watching. Peace in. Jump on the mic.